Hi everyone, welcome to day 14 of Advent of Code 2022. In this video, I'll be going over the puzzles and then explaining my solutions to both of them, including my code. So today on the leaderboard, I did not place on the global leaderboard, but I did get a decent um, place. I got 151 on part one and 347 on part two. I have to attribute this delay in solving time to misreading the problem. So um, this was just another reminder to read problem statements carefully and perhaps read them multiple times. Um, but pretty happy with today's performance, solved both parts in 20 minutes and got in the top 1000. So that's not bad at all. But enough about me and my rankings. Um, let's actually get into the meat of the video. And we're going to start with a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. Unfortunately, no camera for the time lapse, but there will be a camera on for the rest of the explanations. All right, let's go. Okay, so today's puzzles are about simulating sand, and there's a bunch of online things about um, sand simulations or particle simulations where you have a grid and sand is falling down. So today's stuff wasn't too unfamiliar, but let's go through the puzzles and explain them. So um, today we are led to a giant waterfall by the distress signal that we received from our communications device and it appears to come from waterfall but um, it actually doesn't once we get a bit closer we realize that it comes from a little path that leads behind the waterfall and actually there is a cave system that we're going to go into so i anticipate in the next few days we're going to go into a cave and have some adventures in a cave maybe more graph searching i don't know that's some speculation but basically today we have to analyze the behavior of falling sand so that we don't get trapped the idea here is that there is a bunch of rock inside this waterfall and some sand is falling from a source point. Uh, it's going to interact with the rock in some way using these rules um, and it's just going to continue falling down like sand does um, and then eventually it's going to stop and we have to find for how long it continues falling before it stops. So in terms of the details, um, we are given the locations of the rocks as a series of horizontal and vertical squiggly lines. So in this example, there are two lines of rock. One of them goes from 498,4 to 498,6 to 496,6. Now we are operating in an XY plane, so we're only taking a two dimensional scan of the sand inside this cave, um, but they are given in these horizontal and vertical lines that are all connected. So now we have a bunch of rock um, and some sand is going to fall from a singular point, which is 500 comma zero. So X coordinate 500, Y coordinate zero. Should note that Y coordinate increases as we move down, like in displays, not as in like regular coordinate systems where Y increases as we go up. Uh, y is going to increase as we go down. So that's something important to note. Um, as a unit of sand falls, it always tries to fall directly down. So increasing its Y coordinate, if that's possible. If that's not possible because there's something blocking it either it's rock or it's sand that has already fallen then the uh, sand unit is going to try moving down and to the left left that way um, otherwise if that's not possible then it's going to move down and to the right if none of those three options are possible um, then we're going to stop moving and that unit of sand is considered done so how do we know when to stop um, the sand units are eventually going to fall down into the abyss because um, there's finite amounts of rock, so the sand will eventually just fall down into a void. So the question is, how many units of sand come to rest before sand starts flowing into the abyss below? Inside this example, it's 24 because there are 24 units of sand piled up um, that have stopped moving before new units of sand um, just directly go into the void. So let's take a look at how I did this. First, we have to parse the input, and this might be the most challenging part for some people. So I'll take a moment to explain how I did this. So how the lines are organized are, we know there's a bunch of vertical and horizontal lines of uh, rock, and each one is contiguous. Um, each line, it could be zigzaggy, is described by one of these um, like actual lines within the input file. So there's 173 lines inside my input. So inside one line, all we have to do is split by these arrows. These arrows um, split the corners, uh, the locations of the corners in, in, within the line of rock. Um, so we split by those arrows within each line. I mean, after we've already split the original input file by new lines just to get those lines of rock. 
So we take that line, we split it up by those arrows, and then once we do that, we're going to want to map each of these coordinates, which are currently strings. So for example, it might be 480, 150, but that's a string. We're going to need to split that by a comma and then map each of those to integers. So I did have this funny one line thing, which might be difficult to understand. So let me uh, refactor it. Okay, I just finished refactoring. The idea is that we split by those arrows to get each of those raw strings. For each raw string, we're going to split by the comma to get the X and Y coordinate. Since I'm using Python, I'm going to use the map function, which is going to map um, a function to everything inside an iterable. In this case, the iterable is a two element list of the X and Y coordinate, but they're both strings. So we cast them to integers and then put them into X and Y. Those variables we can, add, we can then add into the list of all the coordinates of the corners in order in this current line of rock. So now we have a list of coordinates of those corners and we have to actually fill them in. So the general strategy we're going to use here is create a set that contains the coordinates of all the filled like grid locations. And this might be uh, impractical if we have a larger input, but since we're limited to mostly like the 400 um, X range and like, you know, only a couple hundred, actually only up to a hundred in the Y range or like a little bit more, we're actually dealing with a pretty small grid size, so we can afford to use a set here to literally describe all of the points that have been filled so far. So we want to fill everything with rock before we start putting sand in. Um, so we go through each line. Um, sorry. So after we've pa parsed each line, we have this list of uh, corners. We go through each of those corners, actually every consecutive pair. So we're going to iterate the index i from 1 to the end of this list and then just look at the previous coordinate to see what we should fill in. So we have the current x and y coordinate uh, corner, and then we have the previous x and y coordinates of the previous corner. So now that we know where the current um, corner is and where the previous corner is, we can fill in everything in between. These lines are guaranteed to be either horizontal or vertical. I think we can find that in the inputs. Yep, um, each point indicates the end of a straight, vertical, or horizontal line. So we can be guaranteed that from the last coordinates, from the last corner, we either changed x coordinates or changed y coordinates. Um, so this is this case. If this if statement is if we've changed our y coordinate, if so, then we cannot have changed our x coordinate, which is why I have that assert statement here. We loop through all the values of y that are in between the previous and the current value of y. To do that, I use range. That's normal Python for looping between integers. Um, but since the x, the y coordinates might be out of order between the previous and the current value of y, we actually have to take the minimum and maximum just to make sure we get an increasing list. Um, and then I have this add one to the end just to make sure we do include the endpoint. Going through all those values of y, we take the current value of x, which again is the same as the previous x, so we're uh, filling in a vertical line in this case, we're filling in all those values of y. And then similarly for x, if the x coordinate changes between the previous corner and the current corner, then we are moving horizontally and we want to fill in all of those points. So that's the parsing, we've gone through all of the lines and we have added all the grid points that have rocks into this set called filled um, and we're going to use this later when simulating the sand. So let's take a look, look at how we're going to simulate sand. So the most tricky bit when I read this puzzle was figuring out when to stop because simulating sand is all fine and good but when you have the line of sand that's going to fall into the abyss uh, we don't know exactly when to stop because if we just did what we did for all the other sand blocks it's just going to fall downward forever because it has that option uh, so we need to do something different. In this case, I figured if the if a unit of sand falls below the last line of rock, then there's definitely going to be no sand that has fallen below that line, because if it did, then we would have a infinitely falling piece of sand previously, and that hasn't happened yet in our assumption. So if a unit of sand ever falls below the final line of rock, then we can assume it's going to go into the abyss, and we can just disregard it. So that's why we need this line. We're going to find the maximum Y coordinate that exists um, in the pieces of rock, and we are all, we're doing this uh, exactly after we've passed, parsed the input, so we can be sure that only rock has been uh, included so far. We go through all the rocks using list comprehension, extract their y coordinates, find the maximum one. That's going to be the bottom line of rock. And again, um, y coordinate increases as we go down, so that's why we're taking the maximum instead of the minimum. Okay, now we're going to simulate a single piece of falling sand. We're going to keep track of its x and y coordinate here. Um, we're initializing it to 500 comma zero. That's where all the sand starts from. And we're going to keep falling while this part, while this particle of sand stays above um, the bottom line of rock. And we can just do that by checking if the y coordinate of the sand is less than or equal to the maximum y um, of the rocks. So uh, the order is fall down. To fall down, we increase the y coordinate by one. We check if that space is open. 
um, by looking inside the set and seeing if that downward location is filled. If it's not filled, then we can add one to our piece of sand. It's going to fall down, and then we keep looping. Um, if it can't fall down, then we're going to move to the left by decreasing our x-coordinate and moving, uh, increasing y by 1. I realize I'm pointing in the opposite direction to the camera, so my hand gestures might not be um, that useful. If we can't move to the left, then we're going to move to the right, increase our x-coordinate by 1, increase our y-coordinate by 1, check if that location is filled. If not, then we actually move our piece of sand and keep going. If all of these three spaces are filled, then we can stop. We're going to add the piece of sand to the filled set to denote that this square is now occupied by a piece of sand because it's stopped moving. And then inside this function, we're going to either return true or false to say if the sand has moved or if it's fallen into the void. If it stopped moving, you know, we add it to the set and then we return true. If it doesn't stop moving, by the time we get to the maximum y coordinate, um, it's lost, so we return false. So true if the sand stops moving, false if it uh, never stops moving. So at this point, we can just keep simulating sand. So we're going to loop forever and just simulate sand. So we're going to simulate a piece of sand, put the result into res. If res is false, then that, sa that sand is falling forever and we can stop the loop, stop putting pieces of sand into the simulation. Um, and at that point, we're just going to calculate our answer. But if not, if that sa piece of sand does stop, then we want to add one to our answer because we increment the number of pieces of sand that have come to rest. So in that way, we can just simply sim simply simulate um, all the falling sand. We can easily tell if it stops by checking the last line of rock and seeing when the sand passes that line, and then just add up all the pieces of sand that do stop moving. Okay, for part two, um, we realized that there is actually a floor. It would be pretty concerning if there was no floor and there was just a hole in the ground inside the waterfall that just went into nothingness. Glad there's a floor um, and we are standing on it. We assume that the y coordinate of the floor is 2 greater than the highest y coordinate of, of any point in our scan. So thankfully, we've already computed that um, inside this max y variable. All we have to do is add 2 to it, and that's going to be the last place that um, sand can fall. Or rather, it has to fall before that point because it's floor, um, and sand can't occupy the floor. So to find somewhere safe to stand, we need to simulate falling sand until a unit of sand comes to rest at 500, 0. So sand is going to keep falling uh, for a long time until it hits that source point, until it like it starts at that source point and literally cannot move because the bottom three squares are all filled. We need to keep simulating until we block the source and then figure out how many units of sand um, come to rest. So this is pretty similar to part one, except we just need to change a couple of our stop conditions. Um, instead of stopping after we reach the final line of sand and then just calling it over and ending the simulation, once we've fallen past that final line of sand, we can actually fall one more Y coordinate um, and fill that up as well. And our stop condition is actually going to be after we have like filled the source points with a piece of sand. So a little bit different, um, but mostly the same things happening here. We're gonna continue to iterate for any piece of sand while the y coordinate is at most the maximum y coordinate because after it's reached that point so in this case after it has reached this line um, it can still occupy a point but it's not going to continue falling further and inside this function um, or rather inside this while loop we're going to move sand downwards so as long as y is at most at the bottom line of sand in terms of y coordinate it can keep falling if it's reached that last line above the floor then it can't move so that's why it's a less than or equal to max y and not max y plus one so same logic as part one check down check left and check to the right see if any of those are occupied if not then move into that location and just keep looping we will stop once we no longer can move this piece of sand down either because we fit the floor or we've hit another piece of rock. Um, anyways, after we've done that, we can just return the x and y coordinate of that piece of rock. It's going to be different from part one. Instead of returning true or false for has this piece of sand stopped falling, we're actually going to return the location of the sand. And that's important because once we have that function, once we can uh, accurately simulate a piece of sand and find out where it ends up, because all sand is going to end up somewhere, it can't keep falling into the void because we have a floor now. Um, we're going to do the same thing as part one. We're going to simulate a piece of sand, um, add that ending location into that field to denote that this piece of sand has stopped falling at x comma y, um, and increment our answer by one to say another piece of sand has fallen. And our stop condition is if, if it has fallen or stopped moving at the source block. So we can check if this piece of sand, um, which ended at x comma y, is actually ended at 500 comma zero, because in that case we need to stop because no more sand can be produced. 
We can stop just by breaking from the while loop because it's an infinite while loop. And at the end, we have counted all of the pieces of sand that have fallen. So that's pretty much it for day, I mean, um, day 14, part two. So today's puzzles were, weren't that hard. Not any fancy data structures or anything. I think the challenging part for me was really getting all of the details right in the like falling simulation because I had a bit of trouble with that. Most importantly, I misread the problem and instead of reading 2 plus the highest y coordinate, even though it was bolded, I assumed it was y equals 11, which doesn't really make sense because my input is much larger and I got a smaller answer than I expected when I assumed it was y equals 11. So I just went back and read this, I actually like made a whole map and printed out this thing um, before I realized that it was 2 plus the highest y coordinate instead of just 11. So I guess the lesson learned is that we can't assume that literals in the puzzle are going to be reproduced in our code, or rather our input. So I hope you found the video helpful and explanatory. If you want to check out my code, that's going to be linked to in the description. Be sure to check that out if you want to see a bit more detail about my actual code. So if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave it down below. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 15. Thanks for watching.